So I wanted to, um, if it's okay, and of course, like anything you don't feel comfortable talking about, we sure. don't have to. But um, I, I was, I'm interested in digging into the the therapy stuff. Of course, more. yeah. Um, yeah. Just because I mean, I find psychology interesting, and just like, so what was what motivated you to start going to therapy? And did you have like trepidation beforehand about like I don't know if I want to go to therapy? Yeah, or? I was. I didn't have trepidation for. Uh, therapy, but I did have it for just like a lot of the um, a lot of the diagnoses or like um, and I still kind of wrestle with that a little bit just a lot of the diagnoses or treatment or whatever mm. um, I think uh, I started going just because um, I was very, I was depressed without doing stand up and I was depressed at the prospect of like you know, kind of that stress we talked about of like, what, when am I, who do I, what do I do? Do I even want to like jump back into this rat race and everything? Mm. Um, but also like, um, it was 2020 and, um, I used to work, like I said, I used to direct the morning news. And so that meant every day I was waking up at like two thirty, three o'clock going to the news station and starting my day with two hours of news like an hour and a half of the broadcast and a half hour of like uh you know cut-ins which is a horrible way to start your day because i'm immediately starting my day with i'm exhausted one because i'm still doing stand-up at night and sleeping for four hours and then going to go do the uh the station but um you're starting your day with the worst news and i had been at the station i started working there 2015 i think so yeah 2015 so every time um, an unarmed black person is killed by police and it's on video, the news airs it. Right. And so my job as the director, every time a tragedy like that would happen, I would watch someone die. Yeah. Uh, so I would watch someone die like at least once a half hour or... Um, once we get to those cut-ins, those cut-ins going into like, you know, Good Morning America or whatever, now that video's playing there. And a trend I notice, I don't know why this is, but it always takes like at least a day for the news to remember that, oh yeah, this is a video of someone dying. So that first day, there's no blurring or censorship or like stopping the video, nothing. So... They wait for the emails to come in. They wait for the emails to come in. Please take this death off the morning. No one's emailed us yet. Air it uncensored. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's just like a constant. Like they forget. They forget. So like the whole time I've been at the station, I've watched Philando Castile die in his back seat several times. God damn. I've watched Ahmad Arbery get shot by those guys in the pickup truck. I've seen mm. that video a hundred times. And, of course, that summer, I watched uh, George Floyd have a knee to his neck. And his, you know, the first day you watch until, like, his body goes limp and Mm. everything. And then they stop playing that part because then they remember, oh, yeah, that's the moment he dies. But now you're still seeing. And it's nothing. It's not like the other ones because the other ones there's like a gunshot involved. So now they're like, in those they like blur out the blood and all of that. Yeah. That one, it's uncensored. And instead of, now instead of just seeing the moment where his body goes limp, we're looking at him screaming for his mother with a knee on his neck and knowing that this is the moment he's dying. Mm. I saw that video It was a lot. It was an. It was a yeah. lot of times of um, seeing that, and every time it was in the news, which of course it was in the news a lot because we had that happening, and then there were several protests, and for whatever reason, we can't just be like, and then this protest happened. We had to be like, this protest happened uh, because of this thing. I know you've already seen before, but we're gonna play it. Play again. it again, yeah, yeah, Jesus. And then Chauvin's on trial, so now we're gonna play it because he's on trial. And then the other officers are on trial, so now we're gonna play the video again because they were on trial. So I, that video played all summer, yeah. and by the time I this became your world. Yeah, yeah. Just watching George Floyd die and 
not um but that's after years of having already watched um you know walter scott philando castile ahmaud arbery like watching all these videos over and over again so by the time i got to therapy like i was just that was the thing just like openly talking about just being like i watch people who look like me die as mm -hmm. part of my job and i work with people who i don't think think about how that weighs on my psyche or the psyche of black viewers when yeah. they just play these videos over and over again any other act of violence that happens there's like a kind of decency to it mm -hmm. of like oh no we caught the security of security footage of a home break-in or whatever yeah. it is and you, it's described it's horrific like the, the violence is described or whatever but you don't watch that video over and over right. again it's really just with these cases yeah where you watch these black bodies get killed over and over um so yeah that was a lot of it was just like kind of dealing with my therapist was the first person to use the word trauma about it which i hadn't really thought about just because trauma always that always Seemed feels personal. like yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like that's something your parents did to you at a very early age right yeah, yeah. yeah like it yeah exactly it felt like too it always feels like too heavy a word like no people other people have trauma i don't have trauma yeah. i can't i can't claim trauma but um so yeah, just having someone to talk to about that and someone to, and my therapist is black, so just kind of like also validating like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's not that's not you being weak. That's not you being like, yeah, that's um, just kind of someone, it was just help, that part of it was just helpful to have someone validate that. And uh, it's been helpful to have, um, like she kind of, uh, gets what I've been trying to do with comedy and yeah. gets like, um, um, also she thinks I'm funny, which like, you know, isn't important, but of course it yeah. is to me. Uh, if my therapist didn't think I'm funny, I'll get, I'm getting another therapist. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like that bit too. Uh, you were doing the other night about, um, not being sure if your therapist likes right, you. Yeah, it's like, I don't, yeah. Who do I talk to about this? If yes. I don't, <laughs> cause that's the thing we talk about for real is just like, you don't have to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have, everybody like you and it's like of course i do you like me though right but do you like me it's yeah, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude i had a whole thing where like when i dip decided to dip my toe into therapy like the way i would go about selecting my therapist went on psychology today yeah and and like i admit that the reason why i feel like my my main issue i want to go to therapy about is i'm just bad at romance i you know i i right, uh, right. get um, ignored and ghosted a lot and don't really know why. And so anyway, I was going through psychology today. Of course I was going through and selecting the hottest female <laughs> therapists and just like tender. And <laughs> I didn't realize, I didn't realize that was a sorting feature. Yeah. I didn't realize it's like, well, I'm just sort going, of going through like checking the box female, please. <laughs> um, and it was like single. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And so anyway, and so like I, I set aside maybe 10 to 15, sent out the first message or whatever to be like, hey, I'm interested. My name's Karen. I'm interested in seeking therapy. Here's my number. I'd like to have a consultation. Yeah. And uh, I only got two responses. It is like Tinder. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't even, most of them didn't even respond. And the ones that did, we started a conversation and then they ghosted me. <laughs> and then I and this is true. <laughs> and then I finally went to therapy and I, I, I found that therapist I really liked. I was getting along and I felt like I was making progress. I really liked her approach. And then one day I get a call. It's like, your therapist doesn't do therapy anymore. <laughs> She's quit. Okay, well, do you, do you have her number? Can I do it with her private? No, she's not doing it at all anymore. Do you want a different therapist? <sighs> I guess... <laughs> Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. Oh, it's like, it, oh it's my like, god, you know, it is funny yeah. though. It is funny. <laughs> and, and also, like, you know, I, I feel that 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 problem again compared to yours or, or most people's problems, <laughs> it's just to me. I ultimately, even when I did, I went to the next therapist, and within three sessions, like, I'm reinforcing a nothing problem here by coming here. Like, I'm, I'm paying 150 dollars a week just to go, man. Wait a while, me. You know, I can't get a girlfriend. 
<laughs> but it's, I pretty much said that to my therapist. She was like, what are some, like when I'm talking about my financial situation, she's like, what are some expenses you could cut out of your life that would maybe improve your, your financial situation? I was like, to be honest with you, number one would be going to therapy. <laughs> This is the most. I was like, you are a drain. Yeah. This is, this you is, are a luxury item. Yeah. And I was like, it's like, well, do you feel like you're getting used? I was like, no, honestly, I feel like I'm spending an hour reinforcing problems that really barely exist. <laughs> <laughs> that's anyway, funny. Anyway, that's funny. Back, yeah. back to your thing. So like, yeah, yeah no, but that's, that's, that's really funny. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed that. <laughs> I am dying on the inside about but, it. Nah. I've, I've definitely also have had sessions where like we, a lot of things we talk about are like time management and mm. everything. And like, cause I'm horrible at it. I'm horrible at time management. And my thing, one of my things is I constantly feel like I don't have enough time to do all the projects I want to do, but also all of the things I have to do to, to stay alive and everything. Yeah. And, um, we are having a session and my therapist was talking to me about, time management and being deliberate with my time mm. and how I need to like, you know, prioritize and schedule my calendar at better and everything. And I'm talking to her knowing that it's like 10 o'clock. I still have a full work day ahead. And mm. when I get off this call, I'm going to have to go do like, like being on the call is stressing me out because I know all of the things I have to do after I get off of the call. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, so it's just kind of like, if I was managing my time better, I would not have taken a therapy session right now. This is a bad day for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I can ask you for advice because you've managed to get a wife. And <laughs> <laughs> get on Tinder. Uh, no, is, that, is that how y'all met? We met on Tinder, yeah. Which is a thing I often forget. Because yeah. uh, she was the first Tinder date I went on. That's that's lucky. Yeah. I Nailed yeah. it the first. <laughs> And uh, she 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 gets annoyed when I say that because I was not. Uh, she's not proud of that. She's not. She's, <laughs> she doesn't have Tinder like, did pride. You, did you settle? No. Um, I wasn't her first Tinder Tinder date. She'd already been on the uh, site for like a while, oh, and okay. so she's she's a little jealous of my one for one completion rate. Um, <laughs> she's just mad about the stats. Okay, yeah, now I understand. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's a thing I forget, honestly, just because uh, we've known each other for years now. We've been married for a year and a half now. And it's a thing that I forget that I was ever on the site. Like, I feel like someone could easily walk up to me and be like, hey, Wills, were you ever on Tinder? And I'll be like, no. I'm like, how'd you meet your wife? I'm like, that's right. Yeah, I was on Tinder. I was, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just so brief you forgot. Yeah. <laughs> but it was. But it also just feels. It, like at this point, at this distance, it also feels out of character mm -hmm. for me to yeah, be yeah. on for me to be on Tinder yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, what led you to that decision? Was was it just kind of like a impending loneliness of just like? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and it was this thing where like I didn't know how much longer I was going to be in Wilmington. I was thinking I was going to be in Wilmington. Maybe like it was like it could be another five years. It could be another five weeks. Who knows? Yeah. But, I, um, yeah, I tried online dating a f like a half a year earlier than that, went on one date, went on one Bumble date mm. and was like, you know, I was coming, it was like a few months off of a breakup too. So I'd been single for a few months, went on Bumble, went on one date and I was like, I'm not ready to do this. I don't want to meet folks. I don't want to like, I don't want to do a relationship. I don't want to like, I am still like, yeah. <laughs> this is too close to the, to the, to my previous relationship. So, um, gave it like another, like half a year plus, like just several more months of like, just, uh, yeah, I don't, I think the decision, I think loneliness is like the best answer to that honestly is the yeah. most honest answer to that just because i did want to like it was also just like a feeling of like i kind of uh look at my life like it's a sitcom mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's like this season of the show has been a real downer um i think we need to bring a new character yeah, in here bring to in a love things. interest bring in a love it's time for the love interest arc yes. it's time to it's time to or at least um 
Yeah, it's, it's just like bringing a new character in here, shake mm-hmm. things up. Do you actually actively think of your life as a sitcom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, a beautiful format to, <laughs> yeah. to think about life in. Because I always say that the way we can cons- like conceptualize our reality is a story. Right. <laughs> and so like to give it a specific format to that story. Oh, yeah. I no, like that. I, I have days where I'm like, oh, this is the season finale. I'm saying goodbye. Hell to yeah. I'm, yeah, saying, yeah. I'm saying goodbye to everybody. Things are we're culminating. All these things, all these storylines that have been going on, they're all culminating on the same day. All right. Uh, this is the end of uh, season 30 of Wills. Uh, <laughs> it's time I like to start. That. Um, do the seasons end on your birthdays or the, it, it, on the end of the years? It's just, it's inconsistent. Some seasons have been like a month long. Some seasons have been, some seasons have been uh, three years long, but it's been, it's a thing. It's like a feeling of like, mm. all right, this is a conclusion. We're wrapping up this season. This is a conclusion. Tomorrow I'm going to start the next season. Um, just kind of like uh, my last therapy session, actually, I got off of it and Alexis was like, how was it? And I was like, I think it was a season finale. It might be a series wrap. I don't know. She kind of like, <laughs> she kind of like pulled out receipts from all these different uh, sessions and like tied them all in together in one. <laughs> Wills, you have officially been therapy. <laughs> you have been right. <laughs> Just like don't, yeah, don't call anymore. Yeah. This is, yeah. So no, I absolutely, I absolutely do think of uh, my life in terms of seasons and uh cast members and recurring characters you're a recurring character by the way long long fan favorite uh recurring oh wow yeah (laughs) shout out to the fans yeah it's like oh yeah oh good it's a cameron episode Uh, but yeah that's absolutely how my life looks in my head nice nice i like that a lot so yeah back back to the thing you're saying about what what kind of brought you to therapy is that experience like working for a news station coming in in the morning and having just kind of really being on the front lines of having the experience of repeat watching these horrific videos yeah. over and over and, and recognizing what that's doing to your psyche. Yeah. And like, I definitely got the sense of that, particularly like the way the, the media outlets like really ran with that kind of thing in the, the summer of 2020 Yeah, to where like my concern, like of course these things need to be reported. Of course. Yeah. But to over report is a is a danger like i think honestly i think just there's an awareness we want to bring right uh police brutality is a real long-standing mm-hmm. thing more of these incidents are not recorded than the ones that are mm-hmm. uh we're still hearing even now in the age of body cams we hear all these stories where like so and so uh ran into a police officer they're dead now <laughs> And the police officer's body cam stopped working one minute before they died. Yeah. Like, it's a real thing that you want to bring awareness to. I hate the use of the videos. I understand, like... Yes. There we, seems to be an exploitative nature to it that you... What you were describing is right. that it's, it's exploitative and that it's overdone. It's... Um, there's a part of it that feels insensitive to me. Because there's things mm-hmm. that, like, you know... Um, It causes reaction, it causes protest and movements and all of that. Uh, Summer of 2020, like, you know, completely, uh, you know, there's been protests before, there have been movements before, Black Lives Matter existed as a slogan and as an organization for like four years before the George Floyd uh, death. So, you know, there's been stuff before. That was kind of unprecedented in the scale of like how much action this has caused. I'm fine with that. I'm in favor. I'm more than fine with that. I'm in favor of change and doing yes. things to provoke those change. But there is an insensitive nature to me where I don't like when it's a, a, a white person or if it's just even if it's just a black person in any other context of how they were killed on video, you know, viewers at home don't want to watch someone die again. Yes. You know, whoever died didn't want their death to be broadcasted over and over. When I die, uh, there might be exceptions like me, uh, <laughs> depending on how hilarious my death is. <laughs> Here we have Cameron Smith slipping on a banana peel yeah. at the edge of the Grand Canyon yeah. and doing the goofy scream as he fell to the bottom. Look, if I didn't go viral before I died, please let my death be the thing that turns this thing around. <laughs> 
Yes, a banana peel death is very in character. It's very <laughs> Here we see a man with a long mustache uh, leaving the banana. Uh, banana peel suicide. Banana I intentionally peel trip on a banana <laughs> So fucking Cameron, Cameron went out the way he lived hilariously. Anyway, sorry for interrupting. So, no, no, that's no, that's great. Um, but yeah, I think I do. I do think there is something insensitive in the nature of just like uh, broadcasting these deaths um, over just the video of it. Talk about it, sure. Talk yeah. about, you know, this protest is happening because, you know, he spent over eight minutes with a knee on someone else's neck. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. Those are words. That gives me the whole story. That paints the picture. I'm there. Don't make me watch this man scream for his mother again. Yes. I've, and I know, and it's a, it's a context that I can't speak to for certain because, like, you know, I was at the news. I watch the news every single morning. I know most people don't, but I do feel pretty confident saying that by the time you hit June, July of 2020, everybody had seen it. We don't need to show it anymore. Um, yeah, I just think there is, a, is there something insensitive in the way the news makes you watch these deaths 